on here. One, two, three, four. Okay, so uh, sorry about this. I'm going to record this uh, stream an hour early, uh, the online office hours, because I got to run an errand. And the shop I go to closes at 5, so I got to finish early. So we're going to start it today. Uh, I thought we'd start by going through the midterm. So open up your midterm. Uh, question one. If a position of a turtle at function time is x equal to 3t cubed minus 9t squared, determine the velocity this is as a function of time. Uh, I just take the derivative, so it's 9t squared minus 18t, and then the acceleration is the derivative of that, so it's 18t minus 18. <laughs> I was writing 18 the way you say it. Uh, okay, so b, at the time, t is equal to 2, is the turtle speeding up or slowing down? Um, t is equal to 2, the velocity is equal to 9 times 2 squared minus 18 times 2, so the velocity is equal to 0, and the acceleration is equal to um, 18. Okay, uh, so a quick note on this is that um, my solutions that I gave to the marker had a mistake in them. Um, and so a lot of people got one out of two for this question because they didn't get this part. They wrote this, which is the correct, correct answer. Um, so don't worry about it. I knocked marks off of the final, um, the question that the overall test is worth a, a 30 instead of 30 out of six. Uh, the, the overall test is worth 30 instead of 36 because of this mistake. Well, in part because of this mistake. That's just one point. I thought it was a little too long too, so. Okay, Samus and Logan wake up lost in the middle of the forest. They have walkie-talkie radios with a maximum range of 85 kilometers and they decide to split up and walk in different directions to look for help. After 12 hours, they're gonna turn on their walkie-talkie radios and say whether or not they... Is anybody listening right now? Oh, one person's watching. I wonder if that's me. Okay, uh, so um, they decide to split up and walk in separate directions looking for help. So Logan walks a speed of five kilometers an hour, 20 degrees north of east. So looks like that. This angle here is 20 degrees. And so it's five times 12, so that's 60 kilometers. That's pretty far, Logan. All right, uh, Samus walks three meters, three kilometers an hour, uh, 30 degrees north of west, so in this direction. So it's 3 times 12, 36. And this angle here is um, 30 degrees. OK. So the question asks us to find uh, their, OK, so the question says j hat is that way, i hat is that way. It asks us to decompose these vectors into their components. So in other words, I want to find this and this for Logan, and I want to find this length and this length for Samus. And I use trigonometry to do the two. 60 times cosine of 20, 56.4 kilometers. And then the other is 60 times sine of 20, 20.5 kilometers. And 36 times cosine of 30, this length is 31.2. And 36 times sine of 30, 18. OK, so I now want to describe these vectors. Uh, I guess D Logan and D Samus in terms of these uh, unit vectors. So Logan's this 56.4 kilometers in the positive i hat direction and 20.5 in the positive j hat direction. Samus is minus 31.2 in the i hat direction because I'm going to the left and then plus 18 j hat. Okay, does that make sense? So uh, that's their final positions. 
Uh, part B says, what's the distance between them? So let me draw the distance between them on this vector. The distance between them is this length of line right there. Uh, and the easiest way to calculate that is to set it as a vector. Okay. So this is the vector um, d samus minus d logan. And you do this component by component by subtracting vectors component by component. So it's minus 31.2 minus 56.4 my hat plus 18 minus 20.5 j hat. So this red vector I just drew has components eighty six point four I hat and I guess that's a minus sign. Eighteen minus twenty point five minus two point five J hat. Okay, now note that the question asks what the distance is. Okay. In other words, I just c calculated the components of this vector. I need to calculate its length. So I'm going to use Pythagoras. And you end up with 6 all squared plus 2. Point five all squared square root the answer eighty seven point six kilometers. Okay, will they be able to make radio contact? The maximum range is supposed to be eighty five kilometers, so they're out of range. But that's okay. Each of them does quite well on their own. Next page. Oh great. Um let me let me tweak something here. Give me no eh, paper and there. Okay, that um this one. Okay, that'll do. Okay, so to do this question you have to analyze a graph. So I'm gonna try to reproduce the graph here as best I can. One, two, three. So um, that's one, that's two, that's minus one, and this is minus two, and this is velocity meters per second. I just did an interview with a uh, with a journalist who's writing a thing about one of our grad students. And she was asking about our, you know, me and the grad student went to the same high school. And so um, we had the same high school teacher. So she was investigating the high school teacher and wanted me to, to you know, I hope I wasn't obnoxious. It's terrible when a person is obnoxious. Okay, I'm going to do it in blue just so that we can uh, see the difference here. So this one comes, starts out like this, and then it goes like this goes like that and this one starts at 2 and then it goes down to minus 1 and then it, no what are you doing all right so it starts at 2 goes down to minus 1 and then at f what three and a half somewhere goes to zero. So this is cart A and this is cart B. All right. So we're going to do analysis based on the graph that we see in the test. Question A. Between t is equal to zero and three seconds, is cart A isolated? So between zero and three seconds, is cart A isolated? No. Why isn't it isolated? Its momentum changes. Okay, because its velocity changes. Between three and five, if the system is cart B, is that system isolated? 
So three is here, five is here. Velocity is constant, so it's yes, it is isolated. C. Between zero and three, if the system is cart A and B, is the momentum constant? How do we figure that out? Let's just calculate the momentum. So the initial momentum is going to be two times two kilograms. So the initial velocity is two. And then um, minus one times three. So that's four minus three plus one kilogram meters per second. Final momentum, uh, the final momentum at time three is minus one times two. No, what am I writing here? Just write a two. Just use your hand to write, there you go. Um, and then at three B is plus one. So this is minus two plus three plus one kilogram meters per second. So is, yes, momentum is constant. <coughs> Between t is equal to zero and t is equal to five, what's the impulse? Um, well, the initial momentum is plus one. I just calculated that. The final momentum at time five, um, let's see. So the initial velocity of cart A is zero times two plus one times three. So it's plus three. And so the, the impulse is the change in momentum, p final minus p initial, that's three minus one is equal to two kilogram meters per second. See, that's how to get eight points out of eight. Oh, this is fun. Um, I've seen a, li a little bit of people doing this in kind of a weird way. Uh, uh, I'm, you're on to question four. So how do you do question four? This is actually kind of similar to, to a bunch of them that I did on the um, on the oh here hold on oh, just start working okay no work all right there and we're good are we good we're good okay um, so yeah this this is similar to an online office hour question. Okay, so we, uh, Robin Hood, Robin Rudd is a mediocre archer, but a fine physicist to impress his friends, he's going to put, shoot a bullseye by landing an arrow exactly on the target. He's going to put the target where he knows the arrow is going to land. He shoots his bow at 100 meters per second, which is very fast, and he aims 30 degrees above the horizontal, lifting it exactly 1.4 meters above the ground. So if this is the origin... This is where his arrow leaves. It's, uh, so that's the origin. This is 1.4 meters, okay? And this is 100 meters per second. And this angle here is 30 degrees. Um, so the, 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 the overall question is where is he gonna put his target? But the first question here is what are the equations of motion for the arrow? So I need to know the initial position and the initial velocity. Um, so I'm gonna, use, I'm gonna use trigonometry to figure out the sides. 86.6 and 100 times sine 30, eh, 50 meters per second. Okay. So um, the initial position, it's gonna have an I hat and a J hat component here. The I hat component is, uh, well, it's zero because it's right above the origin and J hat is 1.4. Um, v zero, uh, that's the initial velocity. According to I hat, J hat, uh, this initial velocity is 86.6 .6 meters per second I hat plus 50 meters per second J hat. You dig? 
Okay, these aren't the. This is the equ initial values. The equations of motion are. There's four equations of motion. There's the equation describing the position, the x coordinate position. Whoa, sorry, I was brushing a hair off. Uh, an x coordinate position, y coordinate position, velocity in the x direction, and velocity in the y direction. So I need to figure out what all these values are. Um, Luckily, I know what, exactly what type of acceleration this is. It's a projectile motion, so the acceleration is going to be straight down, minus 9.81 meters per second squared. Okay, so uh, let's start filling in the blanks. Um, the initial position is zero. This initial position is 1.4. The initial velocity in the x direction is 86.650 times t times t plus zero over two t squared minus 9.81 over two t squared. And uh, the velocity in the x direction is 86.6 and the velocity in the y direction is 50 minus 9.81 times t. So to get all four full points, you want to know all those four equations and you're gonna use them in the next part. This question is just me letting you have points. Okay, so uh, determine the amount of time it takes the arrow to reach maximum height. Um, okay, so it's max height when the velocity in the y direction is zero. So I'm going to solve this equation for t, and the answer is 50 divided by 9.81, 5.1 seconds. Okay, so the question, there's two parts of the question. Determine the amount of time it takes the arrow to reach maximum height, that's that. How high off the ground is the apex? So to figure out how high off the ground it is, I'm gonna use this equation. 1.4 plus 50 times 5.1 minus 9.81 over two, 5.1 all squared. This is 128.8 meters. Whoa, this arrow goes high. Okay. Determine the amount of time it would take for an arrow to return to its original height. So the arrow starts out. I want to know when it's at its original height, 1.4, above the ground. Um, you can do this algebraically, but I'm just going to use the fact that I know that it takes twice the amount of time, because of the symmetry of the motion, it's going to take the same amount of time to go from here to here, which is 5.1 seconds, as it does to go from here to here, another 5.1 seconds. What? Be nice. Thus, uh, the amount of time is 10.2 seconds. Uh, you can do it the long way if you want. I don't, I don't care. Okay, so uh, where should Robin Hood place the target? I love this question. It's a really open-ended question um, because uh, it's hard to tell off the, off the scratch. So here's the idea. The arrow's going to go and it's going to hit the ground somewhere, right? The question we want to know is, does it hit the ground before or after the final wall. Does that make sense? In other words, when does it hit the ground? When does it pass the wall? Does it pass the wall before it hits the ground or after? And that's going to determine whether or not it hits the ground before the wall or, or after. Oh, do you see what I'm saying? Okay, so, um, what we do is we solve y is equal to 0, 1.4 plus 50 times t minus 9.81 over 2t squared. You solve it. What comes out is 10.2 seconds. Mm, weird. Okay. This, this make, why, why are they so close? Uh, they're not the same number exactly. Uh, the deal here is that this distance here is 
what's the maximum height? 100 meters, 128.8 meters. And this distance here is 1.4, uh, yeah, 1.4 meters. Okay. So this arrow is, I know it doesn't look like this in the drawing, but the arrow is moving really fast once it reaches this point, and it doesn't take long to, to cover the last one meter. It goes super fast. So um, it's not surprising. This number is going to be super similar to this one. They'll be different in, in sig figs. Uh, they only look the same because they're sig figs. They're approximately the same number. Okay, um, so let's figure out which, which value of x is at this, at this time. 8. 6.6 .6 times 10.2, that's 8.83 meters. Okay, so where's the wall? The wall, oh wait, I didn't write it down on this thing. Uh, it says in this thing, the wall, the, okay, so he's on the left side of the 900 meter room. So the wall is at position 900 meters. So what that means, it hits the ground. I'm gonna write it like this hits the ground before it has time to reach the wall. Okay. Um, so it hits the ground before it has time to reach the wall. And that means that put the target on the ground Okay, what does it mean visually? It means the wall is still over here. So he wants to put his target on the ground right here. <clears throat> 883 meters. Ta-da! That's the answer. You note that that final answer is only worth uh, two points. One of them is if he's going to hit the wall or the ground and what the coordinates are to that point. Okay. Anybody in the watching this? Just, just me, huh? Okay, so uh, the last point here is uh, it's a derivation question. This question is a lot like a question we did in class. Um, the mathematics of this question are exactly the same as the mathematics of what we did in class. The big distinction here is that the way it's premised is, is set up differently. So you're given a diagram that looks like this, V and T. And then they mark a V0 and T0. V0 and T0. And you get a line that looks like this. And then it says V and T. Okay, and that's what the diagram looks like. The text says this. The figure below shows a plot of velocity versus time for a particle moving with constant acceleration AC. Use this plot to derive an expression for the displacement of the particle in terms of V0, the time interval delta T, and the acceleration AC. So your final answer should only have the terms V0, delta X, delta T, and AC in it. To receive full credit, clearly explain your method and all your steps. So how do we solve this problem? They were fairly generous with, with with this question. Um, we don't have much to work with here. Uh, a lot of people say the answer is calculus, and it is calculus, but you don't have any calculus because you don't have any equations to deal with. So the question here is, what on this graph corresponds to your displacement? And the answer is the area under the graph. It's not the area under the graph, it's just this area under the graph here and here everything below the graph in this region. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna name those areas. Uh, <clears throat> I'll call this A1 and A2. A1 plus A2. So all I have to do is figure out an expression for A1 and A2 involving delta x and all, all that jazz. So delta x is equal to, so what's A1? Uh, well, the height is V0. And the width here is delta t. So the height here is v minus v0, and the width is the same. So a1, that's a triangle, so it has area 1 half base times height. And a2 is a rectangle, so it has area base times height. 
times height. Okay, am I done? No, it says that a final answer should only have the terms V0, delta X, delta T, and AC in it. This one clearly has another term in here. So I have to replace something with AC. What am I gonna do? There's a couple different ways to do this. I'm gonna tell you my favorite. Um, it's back to geometry. What on the graph corresponds to a C question mark and the answer it's the slope rise over run so uh, the rise here is V minus V zero and the run is Delta T and so you end up with V minus V zero is equal to a C times Delta T and I can replace that to get the final answer And that's how to do the test. Hey, look, it only took me 26 minutes with all that narration to do the test. Okay, so uh, let's move on to the questions from this week. There's relativity questions. Boy, I love relativity. I, I don't know, I'm trying not to spend all every second of every lecture talking about it, but relativity, philosophically, it goes deep. Um, anyway, we're doing page 97, questions. 7, 9, 10, 17, 19, 29, 33, 61, 64. Uh, the principles for doing these questions are very similar to the ones we've been doing in class, but the more examples you see, the better. So essentially, I took all the questions on the assignment, and I took the questions that were near those questions, and we're going to do them. Question 9. This is from page 97 in your black book. If you want to open your black book, that's cool. A pickup truck has several empty soda cans loose in the bed. Why do the cans roll forward in the bed when the truck slows down? Hmm. Uh, okay. We got a truck. Maybe you should watch the road, buddy, instead of looking back at the soda cans in your truck. Okay. So the simplest answer for the question, uh, why does the truck, okay, so the truck is slowing down. So it has a velocity like that. And it has an acceleration like that because it's the velocity is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. Why do the tr why do the uh, empty soda cans loosen the truck? Why do the cans roll forward when the car slows down? Um, the there's a couple ways to answer this. The easiest way to say it is to shrug and say, "Oh, it's because uh, driver, the person watching the soda cans, is." in an accelerating reference frame. And so the cans move without motion. Cans move without forces applying to them. Uh, that's true, but it's a little trite. I'm guessing that the question wants a little bit more from us. Um, so what we do is we can compare the relative velocity between the two, okay? So initially, the can, all right, here, I guess I've got to draw, oh, you know what? I bet I can copy and paste. Okay, hold on, hold on. Nope. I'm going to erase the can. No. Wait, I can undo. Cool. OK, now I'm going to copy this. OK. We're going to do a before and after um, for this. OK. So. 
Uh, the truck's initial velocity is like that. Uh, you know what? I've got graph paper. I can make this more specific. Okay, so the truck's initial velocity is, how about we go four squares? One, two, three, four. Okay. So after uh, a second or two of braking, the truck's velocity is, I don't know, two squares. The initial, the final. Let's talk about this can. Here is my can and my can. Okay. When the truck is rolling, the can presumably is stationary in the back of the truck. And that means that the can has the same velocity, two, three, four, as the truck does. Okay. So the can's velocity and the truck's velocity are the same. And so they're stationary relative to one another. One, two, three, four. Cans are round, so they roll. So that means that stuff isn't pushing on them very good. So when the truck brakes, the can still has a velocity of four boxes per second, whatever. Uh, it still has this velocity, four. The truck's velocity is smaller. And so the can is moving faster than the truck. And so it starts to move forward inside the truck. Does that make sense? So that's a fun way of doing it. Oh, that was question nine. I was supposed to do question seven first. I guess I'll do question seven now. All right, everybody read question seven. Pause the stream and read question seven. Try doing it yourself. Learning works a lot better if you try it before I tell you how to do it. All right, ready? Incidentally, hold on a second. This window is all bonkers. I wonder if I missed something. All right, that's that's better. Okay, so um, a woman standing beside a road sees a car accelerate from breast at, to 30 meters per second. Describe the car's motion as seen by the driver of a truck traveling in the same direction as the car at a constant 30 meters per second. What if the truck is moving in the opposite direction? Is the, veloc is the direction of the acceleration of the car affected by the constant velocity of the truck driver relative to the earth? Woof, that was a mouthful. Okay. Here's a road. Um, initial, final. Actually, you know what? Initial, mid, All right, time to draw a truck. Truck. Uh, time to draw a car. I, that's not what cars look like. Good enough. And trying to draw a lady. She's a lady. Whoa, whoa, whoa. A stick lady. Talking about a little lady. Paste. And copy. Okay, so this lady's sitting still, <clears throat> and the truck is moving with constant velocity. Let's go, uh, we'll go four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so delete.
that's spooky. I wonder what that is. Stop doing that. Delete. Copy. Paste. Okay, so next second they are there. And so get this car out of the way. It's fun making these diagrams, FYI. All right. Paste. All right. Okay, so uh, this one starts from rest, so its velocity is really little, and then its velocity is two, and then its velocity is four. That's not four, is it? Well, that's, that's way more than four. Okay, so it's asking us to describe the, the relative motion here. Um, so first, this car isn't, so blah, 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 blah. describe the car's motion as seen by the driver of the truck in the same direction as the car 30, that's what we've drawn. What if the truck is moving the opposite direction? We'll deal with that in a second. Okay, so right now, um, when we talk about relative position, actually, yeah, why don't we talk about relative position? So let's talk about relative position right now. So the relative position right now is that, and then it's that, and then it's that, okay? How is this position changing? You'll note that this line here gets shorter. The blue line gets shorter. In other words, it looks like delta r, according to the red truck, is in the negative direction. So at first, it looks like the truck, to the truck, it looks like, okay, v truck, rel car relative to the truck, looks like it's moving minus 30 kilometers an hour. And now it looks, as this car speeds up, the, the distance here, it's still negative, but it's getting smaller. Maybe it's 15 kilometers an hour. And now when their velocities match, the distance between them isn't changing anymore. So the relative velocity is gonna be zero. Does that make sense? So at the start, it looks to the truck like this car is moving to the left really fast and then it slows down to a stop. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Weird, but it's true. Okay, so um, what if the truck is moving in the opposite direction? If the truck is moving in the opposite direction, I wonder if I can mirror this. style? Nope. Can I twist it on the page using incredible Macintosh? Oh! <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, geez. That didn't work. Okay, uh, long story short. Um, if the truck is moving in the opposite direction, so if the truck is going this way, It'll look to this truck like the car is moving in the positive direction. Fast at first, and then as the car speeds up, that distance between them is going to increase faster and fast, decrease faster and faster and faster. And so it'll look like the car is speeding up in their direction. Okay. 
Is the direction of the acceleration of the car affected by the constant velocity of the truck driver relative to the Earth? That's a fascinating question. Um, the answer is no. No, it's not. Why, why isn't it? Um, There's a couple ways I can put this. Um, so uh, let me do it the way I did it in class. There's a lot of different ways I can explain this, like I said. Um, so uh, everything's being des described by this lady, right? So maybe a different color. This is the vector. V, uh, bleh. R, lady, car. This is the vector, R, lady, truck, and this is the vector we want, R, truck, car. Whoops. So, and then you, you consult the, the diagram here. So, R, lady, truck, plus R, Tire car is equal to R lady car. And then you take the derivative of this. Boop. So velocity lady truck plus velocity truck car is equal to the velocity um, lady car vectors. And then you rearrange this. Truck car, that's the one we're talking about hypothetically. How does it look compared to the truck? Okay, <clears throat> so uh, this term right here is the velocity of the truck, constant velocity of the truck. Okay, okay, so what's the acceleration? The acceleration is found essentially by taking the derivative of these expressions, entire car, is the acceleration of the truck car relative to the truck d by dt v l c is the acceleration of the car relative to the lady right okay so i'm going to take the time derivative of both sides of this expression d by dt and the result is acceleration truck car is equal to acceleration lady car minus the time derivative of VLT. So they can be different. What's this value though? The trucks, according to the lady, the truck's velocity is constant. So that's zero. And so these two will be the same. That's the easiest way to explain it. Uh, there are graphical ways and stuff, but I'm getting tired. Let's move on to the next question. Uh, next question is question 10. 10? 10. 10. I guess it's 10. Really? I guess so. You drop your keys in a high speed elevator going up at a constant speed. Okay, so there you are dropping your keys. Also, the box is going up with a constant speed. Do the keys accelerate faster towards the elevator floor than they would A, if the elevator were not moving? Okay. Would they accelerate towards the ground? In, in other words, how much time uh, does it take to hit the ground? 
This question is amazing. Okay, so how should I put this? The answer to A is same acceleration. And the answer to B is that uh, uh, if the elevator is going down uh, the keys take more time to hit the ground okay so uh, why why is that it's a good question um, there's several answers to this and we're going to go through some of them. But the key to understanding all of these questions, it sounds like a paradox. Why would these be the same? And if these are the same, why would these be different? Uh, the thing to understand here is that um, when it comes to reference frames, we either uh, trust the principle of relativity or we convert to a, uh, uh, an inertial reference frame. We are comfortable with. In other words, there's a fast way to do these questions involving the principle of relativity or there's a slow way of doing it where you put everything, rel you, you describe all the motion of everything relative to uh, your objects and then you, you go from there, okay? So the answer to question A is that law of physics uh, a free fall has acceleration minus 9.81 meters per second squared in the j-hat direction. Okay. Not moving is a, you know, if the elevator was still, that's an inertial reference frame and you're good. And it, the thing would fall at this, at this acceleration. If you're moving at constant velocity, as this elevator is, it's also inertial. So the relative acceleration is gonna be the same, okay? Now, that's me saying this because I'm a big fan of the principle of relativity. You're probably not. So for the sake of getting this clear, let's convert all of this information into a specific example that we can work through. Okay, so example. Um, I move upwards, elevator, up at, I don't know, 10 meters per second. And my height above the floor is um, I'm gonna fudge the numbers here so that it's easy to do. How far does it take to fall one second? Uh, that's 9.81 divided by two, 4.9 meters, okay? So in other words here, I'll draw a picture of it. I'm going to compare, because you're like, hey Hagrid, yes Harry, I'm Hagrid the giant. I'm gonna drop my keys in this giant elevator from a height 4.9 meters above the ground. So here's your keys. Okay. <clears throat> and we'll do it in two cases. One of them where the box isn't moving. And the other where it is. 4.9 meters. B is equal to zero. 
let's start with the v is equal to zero case. Um, so we'll put the origin on the floor. The equation of motion for this is going to be, well, I guess I'll use y just because I'm not a sociopath. y is equal to 4.9. Its initial velocity is 0. Uh, 9.81 over 2t squared. And we solve this equation for when it hits the ground. T is equal to one second. Hooray! Okay. So, in the still elevator shaft, it should take two seconds to hit the ground. What about in the moving elevator shaft, elevator box? Okay, so this box is moving at 10 meters per second. How long does it take to hit the ground? Shall we use the ground there on the floor of the elevator shaft as the ground? I don't I don't think you're comfortable with that, to be honest. So let me draw the elevator shaft as it is. And we'll use the initial height of the elevator as the origin. Okay? So that means that the key's position are y is equal to 4.9 uh, minus 9.81 over 2t squared. Difference here is now when I let the keys go in my reference frame, the keys are actually moving upwards with the elevator at 10 meters per second. So when do they hit the ground? It's a fun question. Let me tell you how not to do it. That's how not to do it. No. Why aren't we solving for it when y is equal to 0? That's not the solution to our problem. Why isn't it the solution to our problem? It's not the solution to our problem because the floor of the elevator is also rising at 10 meters per second. Okay? So, keys. I also have to write an equation for what the floor is doing. The initial position of the floor is zero and it's moving with constant T times 10, okay? So now they're gonna hit the ground when they're at the same height at the same time. So four point nine plus ten times t minus nine point eight one over two t squared is equal to ten t. And now I solve this equation. 4.9 minus 9.81 over 2t squared. The 10 t's cancel out. And I end up with t is equal to 1. So you see, in both cases, it takes the same amount of time for the keys to hit the floor. Keys, floor. Now this question is actually really similar to the last one we did. Remember this one up here where we talked about the acceleration? You had an object that was accelerating, this car, and you had another object that was moving with constant velocity, this truck. So this truck and the human are both inertial reference frames, okay? So neither of the, they're moving at constant velocity relative to one another. And if they're moving at constant velocity relative to one another, they're all going to agree on how, on the rate of change, on what the acceleration is. Because they're moving at constant velocity with respect to one another, they're going to agree on what the acceleration is. Same thing here. 
In this case, there's some acceleration, fine, whatever. We, we, we've done this one to death. In this case, though, there's an object and it has an acceleration. Okay, and that acceleration affects its velocity and position. But relative, so this acceleration is relative to somebody outside the elevator shaft watching this horrible series of events play out. But the idea here is that the floor of the elevator, where the keys are going to hit, that's moving with constant velocity. Okay, So the floor of the elevator is also an inertial reference frame which means that the floor of the elevator and the person outside the elevator are going to agree on what the key's acceleration are. Does that make sense? Okay, so there we just demonstrated it. What about uh, part B? What about if the elevator is accelerating downwards? Um, Okay, so there's two ways to do this. Um, one of them is, you know that the, ex the, the elevator box, this is a non-inertial reference frame in this question because it's got an acceleration, okay? Well, that means things won't work the way we're used to. Gravity won't have the same acceleration as it does in an inertial reference frame. So one question is, is it going to be bigger or is it going to be smaller? What's going to go on? Uh, like I said, there's a couple things you could do. You can try a question like this. It's pretty fun. Uh, another way you can argue through it, though, is by talking about this expression. I'm going to rederive this and go through it all with you right now. But that's the idea. In this case, this term isn't going to be 0. Okay. So, person outside, outside, and then uh, there's a person who lives in the floor, floor, okay, and then you got the keys, uh, hold on. <clears throat> Okay, so uh, I don't like the way I've oriented this. Oh no, here I can use the I can use the cup. Let's move this guy to the bottom of the elevator shaft. Okay, so let's start by figuring out the relationship between these three. The outsider. Respect, irrespective of what the elevator is doing, the outsider sees acceleration of the keys relative to the outsider is minus 9.81 meters per second squared. That's what physics say. Okay. <clears throat> so um, they also see the floor, outsider floor. That's going to be some negative value according to this question, okay? So what we're interested in here is the acceleration of the floor, wait, the acceleration of the keys relative to the floor. Floor, keys, that's what we're interested in. All right, so let's draw these vectors. Here's our outsider's key. Here's our outsider's floor. Here's our floor key. And we add these vectors up. So it's this, it's R OK plus R floor K is equal to R O floor. OK? Take the derivative of these. Velocity OK plus velocity floor keys plus velocity, no, equals velocity, oh, floor. <clears throat> um, okay, so 
This is the velocity of the keys relative to the observer. This is the velocity of the floor relative to the observer. No, nope, those are the keys relative to the floor. Oops. This is the uh, floor relative to the observer. And so the motion of the f keys relative to the floor, in other words, the motion of the keys inside the elevator relevant, relevant, relative to people in standing inside the elevator, uh, that's going to be V O floor minus V O K. Take those derivatives. A floor K is equal to A O floor minus A O K. Okay, so this one here is going to be Keys relative to the floor. There's something that I do wrong here. 4K. Okay. R OK is that one. R floor keys. R Oh, I see, I see, I see. Ah, I made a mistake. Don't you hate when you make mistakes? It happens. Everybody makes mistakes. I want to know where the keys are relative to the floor. So that's this vector here. R floor keys. All right, so the proper relationship is R origin floor plus R floor keys is equal to R origin keys. Okay, so V O F plus V F K is equal to V O K. And um, so the velocity of the keys relative to the floor is equal to the velocity of the keys relative to the origin minus the velocity of the keys relative to, of the floor relative to the origin. And so the acceleration of the floor relative to the keys, acceleration OK minus acceleration O floor. OK. So that's minus 9.81 and uh, minus, minus the acceleration of the floor. So that's going to be minus 9.81 plus a number. See? So. Uh, long story short, that's going to be smaller acceleration than 9.81. It's going to take uh, more time to hit the floor. So that's one way to say it. Um, <clears throat> uh, there are other ways to say it. Whoa. Uh, for instance, you can have the keys. You can draw a motion diagram if you want. So here's the keys in their motion diagram. First, there's that. And then there's that. And then there's that. And then there's one, two, three, five, six, seven, eight. There's that. Okay. Initially, the floor was at this height, for example. And initially the floor is, oh, let's say it starts at zero and starts to accelerate downwards. It doesn't specify what the initial velocity is in this case. So we'll, we'll assume that both of them uh, accelerate downwards. In this case, the, the, the floor is not accelerating downwards as fast as, um, as fast as the keys are, but let's say it still accelerates downwards. Um, so it starts at t is equal to zero. Um, if this is where it is at t is equal to one, and this is where it is at t is equal to two, <clears throat> uh, you see that you know uh, the two will be at the same position some somewhere that 
t is equal to one point something. Okay. So you can draw the motion diagrams. It's kind of tricky to track the motion diagrams in this case, especially when there's two accelerations. It's a very busy diagram. Um, another, mo another way of explaining this is that you can um, you can draw the position versus time diagram of the two. This is what the keys are doing. Okay. If the floor wasn't, if the floor was sitting still, um, it would take this much time for the keys to hit. Oh wait, no, the floor's not sitting still. Hold on. I said it's wrong. Um, so the floor has the same initial velocity as the keys do. Um, the floor has the same initial velocity as the keys do, so it has the same instantaneous slope there, but the, 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 uh, the floor starts lower because it's at a lower place. So the floor will go up and meet the keys there. Boop. Okay, so that's if the, if the floor is moving at a constant velocity. Let's see what it looks like. Okay, so v is equal to constant velocity and this slope and this slope match. If on the other hand, the slope had a, a different acceleration than the keys, uh, so it accelerates downwards, not at 9.81, but a smaller one, the, uh, it would also be a parabola, probably shaped like that. Starting with the same initial velocity, but the two would intersect at a later time. And that's an indication that the acceleration of the keys relative to the elevator shaft is slower. Yeah, there's lots of ways to explain why it's a bigger number. I prefer this way. I feel like it's the one with the fewest number of steps, but if you like uh, more intuitive ones, feel free to knock yourself out. Or you could just do an example problem mirroring these ones. Okay, I have literally talked forever. What's the next question? That's question 10. Now it's question 17. Double time. You place a one kilogram sonic ranger on a low friction track in front of a five kilogram cart to measure the cart's velocity in the earth reference frame, which turns out to be one meters per second I. You're distracted and the car hits the ranger in a totally inelastic collision. That means they stick together. And the two objects move forward uh, with a friend is running towards the cart with a velocity of minus three uh, with her sonic ranger and pointed at the cart. What's your momentum of the cart with the sonic ranger stuck to it in your friend's reference frame? And what velocity does her sonic ranger measure for the cart after the collision? It always helps to draw a picture. Okay, so um, you got your Sonic Ranger. It's sitting there. And then it's on a low friction cart, fine. And then um, there's a 0.5 kilogram cart. And it moves to the right. 1.0 meters per second. Okay. So before, it looks like that, and after, um, they move forward together at some unknown velocity. You got a friend. who's running towards the thing with her own Sonic Ranger. And she's moving that way at three meters per second. Okay, what's the momentum of the cart with the Ranger stuck to it in my friend's reference frame? I can do this a bunch of different ways. Um, the 
the longest way is to just uh, to just calculate what this v is first and do the and then do the transform. Uh, let's try that uh, in my frame. Earth reference frame. Um, the uh, the total momentum is equal to uh, 0 0.5 kilogram meters per second. Um, so then after the collision, P total is going to be the same. Um, but this time it's got velocity, two objects stuck together, 0 0.6. Um, so the velocity in this case is going to be 0.5 divided by 0.6, 0 0.833 meters per second in the plus direction. And then uh, the velocity relative to my friend of the cart is going to be uh, that minus that. So it's going to be minus 0 0.167 meters per second. You want me to sort that out? Let's just do that calculation. It's so easy to do. Um, OK, so here's me. Uh, you got my cart. I'll draw it over here. All right, no, that's fine. R, earth, cart. R, earth, friend. R friend cart. So R earth friend plus R friend cart is equal to R earth cart. So V earth friend plus V friend cart is equal to V earth cart. So V friend cart is equal to V earth cart minus V earth friend. So I subtract them. 0.833 minus, oh, it's minus three meters per second. Okay, sorry, I got this wrong. This is going to be minus 2.167 meters per second. Okay, and then the momentum, friend cart, is going to be that times the mass. So 0.216, 2.167 times 0.6. Minus 1.3. Uh, there's an easier way. So my friend is moving in an inertial reference frame because she's moving at constant velocity. So I know that for her, it's also going to be an isolated constant momentum collision. So for her, the cart's initial velocity, or geez, I mean, whatever. For her, the cart's initial velocity is going to be um, God, why do I do that? This can't, this can't be right. I didn't, I didn't do the vectors right. That's wrong. Jeez. Uh, okay, so this is 0 0.833 minus minus 3. So it's 3.833, and then the final answer is times 2.3 kilogram meters per second. All right, back to this one. Um, the relative velocity is going to be uh, 1 minus, minus 3. So initially, the cart's moving at 4, kilogram, uh, four meters per second. It has mass 0.5. So the total momentum is going to be minus two. These two should match. Why don't they match? What are you wrong? So 0 0.5, that's right, divided by 0 0.6, so 0 0.33 plus 3. Mm -hmm. um, 
it's supposed to have a minus sign in front of it. Um, no, nope, it's supposed to have a positive sign in front of it. Yeah, that's supposed to have a positive sign in front of it. Jeez, I'm all over the place. How much time do I have left? Ooh, I gotta go. Okay, uh, the, the, um, I'm so busy lecturing. Let's get to thinking. Right. Point three. All right. Do they need to have the same? Oh no, I'm calculating the momentum. So first, I calculated this momentum. Oh, 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 oh! I figured it out. I got it. Ha ha, ha ha. This is the cart's momentum in my friend's reference frame. Uh, the the um, Sonic Ranger also has a velocity. Its velocity is uh, three meters per second. And so the Sonic Ranger's momentum is three times 0 0.1, so that's 0.3. So the total momentum of the system is two plus 0 0.3, so that's 2.3. All right, regardless, that's the answer, okay. What velocity does your Sonic Ranger measure for the cart after the collision? That. Done. Okay, so, uh, next question. Um, 19. Uh, carts A and B are identical, but moving towards... Oh, it's a three-star question. What the heck? Carts A and B are identical and moving towards each other on a track. Cart, speed of cart A is V, while the speed of cart B is 2V, and the Earth's reference frame in the system of two carts is kinetic energy K. Is there any other reference frame in which the two cart system has the same kinetic energy K? If so, define, describe this reference frame. Otherwise, explain why not. Time for some algebraic reasoning. What else do they tell us? Okay, so this one has speed and this one has speed 2v and one half m1 v squared plus one half m1 m2 uh, 2v all squared is equal to k oh they're identical sweet same mass Uh, so this is one half m v squared plus one half times four m v squared, which is equal to five over two is equal to k. Suppose I have another observer here running forward with velocity w. <clears throat> uh, according to this person, uh, its kinetic energy is me, I guess. Uh, their kinetic energy is going to measure one half m v minus w all squared plus one half times two v minus w all squared. So this is one half m v squared minus two v w plus w squared. <clears throat> um, plus, oh, hello, plus, I know what the answer is, I do, uh, there might be another, there might be another uh, reference frame where the velocity of this guy is 2v and the velocity of this guy is v, um, yeah, if w is equal to uh, minus 3v, then, uh, then that works out because 
this one's relative velocity will become minus 2v, and this one's relative velocity will become v, and the squares cancel out. But we should be able to show this algebraically. Um, so this is 4v squared minus 4vw plus w squared. So this is um, v squared, um, nope, 5v squared minus 6vw plus 2w squared. And we want to know if there's any w where this is equal to 5 over 2 and v squared. So um, stuff cancels out. So the thing about reasoning algebraically is that uh, you often can kind of run in circles if you don't really know what you're doing. Not if you don't really know what you're doing. That's the right way, wrong way to say it. But if you don't really have a sense of what you're doing, uh, you can kind of run in circles. So, uh, surely there you are. W is equal to zero is one solution, and W is equal to plus three V. Plus three V, really? Um, okay, well, yeah, whatever. Uh, I, I gotta go. So you, you get the point here, right? It's that um, the kinetic energy de depends on the speed squared, not the velocity squared. So if this person is traveling to the left with uh, velocity 3v, then the relative velocity of the first cart, this one, becomes uh, minus 2v, and the relative velocity of this cart becomes uh, minus v. Since they have the same mass, squared, squared, one half m, one half m, they add up to be the same thing. Okay, I gotta go to the next one. That was kind of a poor explanation, but it was three star and I'm scared and I have to go home because I have to run an errand and all the stores close. Okay, you toss a ball in the air and note the time travel between the ball leaving your hand and reaching its highest position. Good. When you're doing this, a construction worker being lifted on a hydraulic platform at a constant speed also notes the time interval needed for the ball to reach its highest position. Is the time interval reported by the worker longer, shorter, or the same as the interval report? It's the same. Uh, why is it the same? It's because, you know, it's like I said, you can either do it mathematically. If you do it mathematically, I've done it like four times before. The acceleration for both cases is going to be 9.81 meters per second squared. So it's going to take the same amount of time to peak. Oh, wait, hold on. Highest position relative? Okay, hold on. Um, <clears throat> um, so, uh, this question is actually kind of weird, and it's weird in a way that the um, that the um, that the previous elevator one was definitively not not the case, and it's weird in the following way. Um, Here's why it's weird. Uh, we want to know when the ball reaches the max height. The question I want to ask, though, is, is the maximum height the maximum height distance above the ground? Because if that's the case, it's the same in both. Um, or is the max height the maximum distance, say, below the elevator? I'll call that blah, I'll call that R construction worker ball. Okay.
<clears throat> so, um, uh, long story short, let, let me set up the equations of motion for the two. Um, the uh, the R E B. Okay. R E B is equal to the initial height uh, plus the initial velocity times time minus 9.81 over 2t squared. <clears throat> Okay. Um, RCB is going to be. Oh, wait, I got to describe the construction workers' uh, height as a function of time. Our Earth construction worker is going to be equal to, I don't know, uh, some other h, initial height, uh, plus some initial velocity times time, constant velocity. Okay. Um, <clears throat> R E C. So R E C plus R C B is equal to R E B. I want the height rel the position relative to the construction worker. Okay. Here's the fun and weird bit. Um, so if you subtract these, you get H minus big H plus v naught minus w times t minus 9.81 over 2t squared. <clears throat> um, and so, uh, so the velocity relative to the earth of the ball is going to be v naught minus 9.81 times time. The velocity of the ball relative to the construction worker is going to be v naught minus w minus 9.81 times t. <clears throat> so uh, this is why this is a bad question, because uh, it's not quite clear whether we're talking about the relative position. You know, so maybe this guy's like, oh, the maximum height. is when RCB is equal to a minimum, right? He's going up. The maximum height is maybe the, oh, foot balls. Is this, oh no, it's still updating. Okay, good. Uh, yeah, so is it is it when this thing's the minimum? I don't know. Um, or is it when, relative to this guy, max height, is when R E B is equal to the maximum. Which one's which? Because they're not the same. Look, this one is equal to zero at a different time than when this one is equal to zero. Because those numbers are different. Both are going to see the same acceleration. OK, so long story short, if this one identifies the maximum height as being when it's the highest point above the ground, we're absolutely cool. Because this guy says that the ground and the ball and everything have an initial relative velocity. And so th th that distance will be, un that amount of time will be unambiguous. If this fool thinks that the maximum height is when the ball is the closest distance to the bottom of his pan, he's in for a surprise because this time is going to be different. So that's kind of a bad question. I don't know. It's, it's a little bit ambiguous. I love questions that let us flesh things out. But uh, if the student has is ambiguous about what the answer is, that's not good. OK, so um, what next? God, I got to go. Uh, 29, 29, 33, 33. Riding up an escalator while staying on the same step for the whole ride takes 30 seconds. Walking up the escalator takes 20 seconds. How long does it take to walk down the up escalator? This is fun. Um, 
So uh, the fact that it's an escalator and an escalator's diagonal is kind of what makes this a, a weird, complicated question. Um, so instead, what we're going to do is we are going to do this question, but take the escalator and put it on its side, like a moving sidewalk. Okay. <clears throat> So, you have, stuck to the moving sidewalk, a friend, Bob, who's standing still. He's standing still on the sidewalk, but he's moving with some velocity, B, uh, relative to, to me here. I guess not me, uh, uh, Sarah. Okay, so here I am. And I'm walking with some velocity over the sidewalk. So I'm walking with some velocity. Bob's walking, standing with some velocity. And we're given some clues here. Okay. So um, to walk this length, L, it takes Bob 30 seconds. So Bob's velocity is equal to L over 30. Um, my velocity is equal to L over 20. <clears throat> okay, so the deal here is that uh, we then reproduce the experiment, same length escalator, but this time I'm going to walk backwards that way. My velocity won't be the same as it was before, but I can still figure out some parts to it, which is to say that I have a velocity relative to Bob. Bob, me. Okay? If I knew what the velocity relative to Bob was, I could figure out how fast I'm traveling over the escalator. Um, so let's just set things up. That's my height. This is Bob's position. Our Bob, Sarah, and here is my position relative to Bob. So RBS plus RBM is equal to RSM. So VBS plus VBM is equal to VSM. So V, um, my velocity, the speed that I'm traveling over the sidewalks, V S M minus V B S. So this is going to be uh, Sarah versus me. So that's L over 20 minus L over 30. <clears throat> uh, so uh, the answer here is uh, 3L over 60 minus 2L over 60, 1L over 60. That's how fast I'm traveling, so that's W. <clears throat> okay, so in the next round, um, here's Sarah again. She moved over here. <clears throat> I want to figure out what my velocity relative to Sarah is. Sarah, me. And it's going to be velocity, my velocity relative to the staircase plus my, uh, plus the velocity. My VBS. Oh, geez. It's not supposed to say BS. It was supposed to say velocity SB.
S B Sarah Bob Sarah Bob Velocity Sarah Bob plus velocity Bob me. Okay, the velocity of Sarah of Bob relative to Sarah is L over thirty, and the velocity of me is minus L over sixty, because I'm going backwards now. <clears throat> so that's L over sixty. Whoa, what? Um, oh, okay, hold on, hold on, hold on. Um, so the question says, how long does it take to walk down the up escalator? Walking up takes the same, I don't know, whatever. Uh, so V SM times 60 is equal to L. So 60 is equal to L over VSM. It takes 60 seconds, I think. Gotta go. Being late to a thing means that I can't work slowly. This is a pretty bad explanation of it. Relative velocity is pretty fun though. Okay, so uh, what's the next question? 61. Uh, a mother penguin and a chick are living in a flat, are on a flat icy surface. The mother is lying at rest at five meters from the edge of the water. The chick has a fourth of the mother's inertia is sliding, collides with her inelastically, and bounces back at one eighth the original speed. The mother wakes up as she hits the water 0.4 seconds later. <laughs> Weird. All right, hold on. Let's draw this. Um, so, here's your mom, and that's this distance here, that's 0 0.5, and the mom has inertia M, and the baby uh, has inertia M over 4. Um, and has some initial velocity v. And after they collide, the mom has some velocity and the baby has some velocity as well. Bounces back at one eighth the original speed. Jeez, uh, I think this question is implying that the velocity goes this way at v over eight, um, and that uh, okay. So uh, the mom hits hits the water, travels this this distance in delta t is equal to zero point four seconds. So the mom's velocity is. Oh, geez, come on. Uh, yeah, yeah. No, 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 there we go. Um, 0.5 divided by 0.4, 1.25 meters per second. So this is traveling 1.25 meters per second. All right, so how fast was the chick going when he hit her? This is a conservation of momentum question. Um, so the initial momentum is equal to, I'll call it V times M over four. P final is equal to 1.25 times M minus M over four times V over eight, if that's right. <clears throat> so V over four is equal to 1.25 minus V over 32. And let's do some algebra. Eight V 
is equal to 32 times 1.25, 40 minus, oh geez, it's the door. Good luck. Have a nice day. It seems really reasonable. Ah, oh, jeez. Hey. No, you set yourself up for success. I know, but. You did good. Thank you. All right, I'm going to thank you. Yeah, people keep knocking on my door. All right, uh, uh, did you finish the question? V is equal to 40 over 9. Does that make sense? That's a weird number. 4.44 meters per second. I don't know. That's what my God. Okay, so um, B. To a penguin paddling directly towards them at 1 meters per second. Oh, cute. So there's another penguin here. Okay. Uh, what's the mother's momentum before and after the collision in terms of M mother? Okay. So uh, before the collision, uh, the velocity of the mother relative to the swimmer is going to be uh, minus one meter per second. So the momentum before is going to be minus uh, m mom. Okay. And then after, uh, after the collision, uh, after the collision, v s m is equal to uh, minus 2.25 meters per second, and so PSM is equal to minus 2.25 times M mom. Done. 64, oh, gotta get out of here. No, I just, uh, yeah, 50 kilogram meteorite it was moving at 1,000 strikes the earth. Assume the velocity is along the joining. I gotta get out of here, I gotta go. I gotta, I gotta catch a bus. Uh, okay, so I just won't do 64. Uh, good luck, everybody. Yeah, sorry. Sorry, I gotta go. Bye.